just looking at some material to purchase for this RV that we're going to attempt to remodel. <laughs> and my mind is thinking normal house, you know. Well, let's just tile this and put this in and put that in. It's like, wait a minute. So I decided to look up some RV stuff and because it comes smaller. <laughs> And so my wife and I were driving to go see mom yesterday, and I said to my wife, I said, you know, I was looking up this RV stuff, and they had sales of RVs. I said, man, you can buy an RV for 21 grand. And she goes, wow, that's a cool thing. And she goes, let's do it. And I said, no. <laughs> and the reason no came up was because that's not a part of my new life. See, that might be a desire, but I don't own my life. And, and the reality was, you know, you, you live in this arena where, as a believer, because that's what the word says, he says, deny yourself. <laughs> So in other words, it says he bought your life. But as a believer, we should not look at our life. We're supposed to be living his life, not ours anymore. But you can't do that without God's presence. And you can't do that without being a worshiper. Because without the true worship, that's where the Father says, I seek those who worship me in truth and spirit. If he's seeking you, that means he's going to touch you. And you're going to get reconnected again. Why? Because without that reconnect and without his presence and his power, you have a tendency to think about the way you should live. The way things should be. The way things not only should be, but how they should be. That's when you're living for your life not his. See, people get frustrated because they're still trying to prove their life and fulfill their life and not his. That's when their fulfillment comes from themselves and not from him. And that's where the exchange must be. See, people lose sight that this is not a religious act it's a military operation from God Almighty. And then this, he's put overseers. He's put officers. He's the commander-in-chief. But there are things that he wants us to access, and we cannot access them when we're out of divine order. When we fall out of rank, we lose access. When things are not in priority, we lose access. And we begin to find that we're beginning to live for us again. And again, the formula that he gave us for so long ago is deny yourself, pick up the cross, which if you pull the cross out of the ground, it becomes a sword. And then you can follow because you can't follow without a fight. Amen. It's impossible to follow without a fight to remove the presence of evil and the demonic influence so that you can follow. The moment you stop the fight, the moment the, the moment the enemy takes territory. And his purpose is to take territory on you. He wants to access every kind of member in your body. Now, the Holy Spirit may have access to some and possess, but there's still many places that he doesn't have access yet to. Ephesians chapter 1. We are in such a time and season in battle. Amen? But it's a glorious time. What we're seeing manifesting in the physical, can you imagine what's going on in the spiritual? Man. You know, the word says that the Lord searches and tests the hearts and the minds of the, his children. Amen. 
So we go into trials and tribulations so that we are exposed because God's already known. He already sees it all, knows what we think and what we're doing. He already knows what we're living for our life. What's our motive? What's our desire? He, he already knows whether you're truly seeking him or not seeking him. He knows what you run to first. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Now, grab hold of something here, because we hear this all the time. We speak it all the time. I want you to know that these eternal spiritual blessings are called eternal resources. Do you know that you have access to all eternal resources? These are eternal resources. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So without in Christ, you don't have eternal access to eternal resources. But if you are in Christ but are fruits of unrighteousness, your access will also be denied. Because only righteous access is required. Verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which is his plan, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In other words, these are eternal resources in Christ. We have access to all tools, treasures, knowledge, wisdom, weapons. We have access to his presence, to his power, to fulfill our call, purpose, and destiny. And without accessing these things, we can't fulfill them. We must have assistance. Amen? What, we're try what he's trying to do, he says, listen, in this fulfillment, you will fall into a place of divine nature. You will produce a divine nature. You will be holy. You'll be blameless. And you'll fulfill the, his plan, not ours. You will no longer live for you, but for him. Eternal resources. Romans 5. Romans 5. Oh, happy days. Are we okay? Eternal resources. Again, no human has access to these. Amen. Nobody. Only the righteous children of God have access. Only those who are in divine order have access. Only those whose priorities are set correctly have access. How many of y'all know God knows what you need? Amen. Amen. Well, the word says that he allows it to rain on the wicked and the righteous. But so there's certain areas that both get. Amen? But then there's certain areas that is required access. Romans 5, verse 1. Is everybody there? Therefore, having been justified by what? Faith. Faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith and to this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope in the glory of God. Now, access by faith is access in his plan of escape. So you and I have access to his plan to escape. Escape what? The deception of the enemy and the wrath of God. Because if you don't escape the deception of the enemy, you will end up under the wrath of God. Grace is the plan of escape. It's not some goofy doctrine that says, it's on God's unmerited favor. No, it's God's unmerited love with a plan to escape. Amen? 
So you and I have access by faith in his plan of escape. All right, verse 3. Not only that, but we also glory in what? Tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces what? Perseverance, which is also endurance, character. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been, has been what? Poured out. Ooh, poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who, is, who was given to us. Access by faith in his plan of escape, blessings and salvation are all access you and I have. These are eternal resources. Ephesians chapter 2. Again, this is a military operation, not some soulish operation. Ephesians 2.14. What does the word say? Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. So there's a place where God wants us to reach. It's to hear. I mean, it's to see, to hear, and to decree. He wants us to be able to see. He wants us to be able to hear. And he wants us to be able to decree. Ephesians 2.14, let's speak it together. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, which means hatred, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man for the, from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. We both have access by one spirit to the Father. Why? The Father is the source of all resources. So we have access to the source of all resources. It's too bad people don't take advantage of that. They're always trying to get to a resource without going to the source. And you know who holds the key to all the resources? The source. <laughs> In Psalm 68. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 68, verse 19. Psalm 68, 19, eternal resources. Is everybody there? Amen. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with what? Benefits, the God of our salvation. Benefits are eternal resources. Amen. Our God is the God of salvation. And to God, the Lord belong escapes from death. Benefits are open doors to eternal resources to assist our escape from the enemy traps. Eternal resources. Again, I want to go back to the area where people are still thinking about, I need to get on with my life. Then you ain't right. 
You're not right. We don't have a life. And you won't, uh, you won't access any eternal resource except for what is needed for you to survive here. Because an individual's life is called the life of the flesh. Does everybody get it? And flesh cannot access eternal things. 2 Corinthians 10. So the Lord daily loads us with benefits. These are accesses to eternal resources. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Boy, we'd like something to just to be dropped in their lap. I've been waiting for that bale of money to come through my roof for years. It hasn't come yet. <laughs> but I have access to it now. Does everybody get it? <laughs> I don't want to tell you what I was thinking before I got saved, but anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 10. In verse 3. <laughs> For though we walk in the physical realm, we do not war according to the flesh or the physical things, right? For the weapons, everyone say weapons, of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but they are mighty in God from, for pulling down strongholds. So your weapons are your access there in, in eternal resources. How many of y'all know wisdom is a weapon? How about knowledge is a weapon? Does everybody get it? These are weapons. The name of the Lord is a weapon. His blood is a weapon. His word is a weapon. We have the keys to bind and loose. Those are weapons. But you and I have access to them in all the eternal resources because we are blessed with every spiritual blessing or eternal resource. We're blessed with it. We have access to it unless there's something that denies that access because there's something we're agreeing with or something that's unclean. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or physical, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And we know a stronghold is a memory lie. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And where is this knowledge of God and this battle going on? And your thoughts. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What is your obedience? Grabbing hold of these things. Acknowledging these things. Discerning whether it's of God or not. Amen? And how do you get confirmation? Go to an office. Find out. Confirm it. Especially when it's something... A purchase? How about marriage? Don't you want to confirm that this is the right person you're supposed to marry? So. Snap. <laughs> How about purchase the vehicle or a home? I mean, doesn't, shouldn't you have confirmation on that? That's why God placed us in places. I was under authority for many years as a believer. I submitted to those who oversaw me. Amen. I got everything confirmed all the time. I got counseled all the time. I didn't jump on my own feeling or emotion or what I thought was right. Because many times when I thought something was right, it might have been right in the eyes of man, but not right in the eyes of God. Amen. And those are two different things. And we have a tendency to fight for what we think is right, even when it's wrong. <laughs> we just didn't realize it then. Amen? So weapons of warfare against unseen influences of evil in which we have access to the eternal resources of knowledge. Amen? 
And that's what the Lord says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of connection. John 8. John chapter 8. Oh, happy day. John chapter 8 and verse 42. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his what? His own resources, his own feelings, his own not from God's. Does everybody get it? We have a tendency to do our own resources. And it always gets us in trouble. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears words. Hears God's words. Therefore, you are not, you do not hear because you are what? You're not of God. Amen. Now, grab, the devil speaks from his own resources of death and lying, and it's evil and deceptive. He sways the world in greed, lust, addiction, murder, hatred, false doctrines, and eventually death. His goal is to kill every human being or at least get mankind to kill one another. And Mark 8. So the devil has no access to eternal resources, only resources that promote death and destruction. The word says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If your life, if things are happening where there's stealing, killing, and destroying, the enemy's got access to you. Mark 8. Now he has access to us because we allow it. Mark chapter 8, verse 13. Eternal resources. Oh, hallelujah. 13, is everybody there? And Jesus left them. Does everybody see that? And Jesus left them. Man, did they freak out now. And getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Oh, no. <laughs> now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. See, as soon as Jesus left, they forgot it all. <laughs> And they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. In other words, be careful what you are hearing. See, as soon as Jesus departed, the voice of the stranger always comes. Does everybody get that? As soon as the present, there's things, what the enemy likes to do is provoke you and me to do something to to quench the spirit, to remove the presence of God or back him off, then every voice from hell comes. <laughs> and Jesus warned him, take heed. Be, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And all those in the words say, little leaven leavens the whole lump. Amen. In verse 16, and it says that 
They reasoned among themselves, saying, is it because we had no bread? These guys got, thought they were getting rebuked because they forgot bread. <laughs> but Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? What's the matter with you? Do you not yet perceive nor understand what happened? Is your heart still what? Hardened. Oh, Having eyes, do you not see? See, he's telling them, look it, if your heart is hardened, you can't see correctly. If your heart is hardened, you can't hear correctly. Do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said to him, 12. Also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many ba large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, seven. So he said to them, how is it that you don't understand this then? It has got nothing to do with the bread. Be careful what you hear. <laughs> Jesus left him for the test. He told him, take heed to the voice of the stranger, that evil influence that hardens the heart, which brings blinding to sight, which brings deafness to ears. It blocks access to the eternal resources. Is everybody Okay. 1 Corinthians 2. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 9. Now, you know, the word talks about that we have access by faith. Amen? Faith. Faith is your connection to the unseen substance that is only seen in the spirit. Not in the flesh. What is seen in the flesh is flesh. Amen? Amen? And it usually promotes lust. What is seen in the spirit is substance. Substance that brings life. Unless you see a demon in the spirit, you know that ain't bringing life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through the, his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the what? The spirit of God. Wow. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might what? Know the things that have been freely given to us by God. In other words, and where are these things at? They're eternal resources. They're in the places called storehouses, warehouses, so forth, that God has, that you and I have access to. Now, one of the things that happened Friday night, if you recall, the Lord said, I've opened my warehouses. I've opened my store. I've opened this up for you tonight. Heaven is open. Whatever it is you need, see it. Because what you see, you will receive. Does everybody get it? And I saw like safes opening up that had combinations on them. And they opened up and I saw all of these shelves. I mean, there was cash. There was body parts. There was all kinds of stuff all on these shelves. And he said, whatever you see, you receive. But of course, you want to get sight from him, so he directs you to what's there for you, what's yours. Amen? Because you can't take off somebody else's. There are things that are predestined for you that is in there. 
and it's available for me and you. What you see is what you receive. Oh, snap. To see, to hear, and to decree is vitally important for us. In other words, what we believe, we receive, and what we receive, we execute. You can't get what you don't see. Does everybody get it? Every image, every image is a picture. Every picture has a voice. Amen? Look into the eternal resources and storehouses of God. Seeing what you need, decreeing your receiving will come to pass. Again, to see is to receive. The enemy comes with false image. Yes. To promote fear, lust, and flesh with ungodly desires and assumptions. If you agree with the enemy, you get it. Amen. Somebody got it. So the enemy loves to come with images. If you see it and you agree with it, it comes. Because he always likes to lead you down a presumptuous, false path. And he's trying to get something to you also. It's called fear. Jealousy, rage, works out of flesh. Deuteronomy 16. Again, faith is your connection to the unseen substance that is only seen in the Spirit. That's why you must be filled with the Spirit. Deuteronomy 16. It's verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given you. Verse 18. You shall appoint judges and officers in all of your gates which the Lord your God gives you. According to your tribes, they shall judge the people with just, just judgment. You shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality, nor take a bribe. How many of y'all know the devil wants to bring a bribe to you? Amen. He tries to bribe us. For a bribe does what? It does what? It blinds eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. Wow. Again, when the enemy's trying to come and get you to agree with, when you begin, he bribes you. When you accept that bride, bribe, immediately, of course, as associated with the heart becomes hardened, he blinds us. And then he twists the words in your mind. I've seen many people twist scriptures. He twists the words. He says, you shall follow what is altogether just that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not plant for yourself any tree as a wooden image near the altar which, the Lord, which you built for yourself to the Lord your God. You shall not set up a sacred pillar which the Lord your God hates. In other words, these are idol things. Why? The enemy loves to bring idols in our image. Is everybody Okay. So the enemy comes to blind and twist words with a bribe. James 4. James chapter 4. Eternal resources. Hey. 
How many of y'all want access to your resources? James 4. In verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for what? Pleasure that war in your members. Well, where do those desires come from? Influence. They came from influence. Listen, the enemy knows whether you're living for you or him. He knows it. Sometimes you may think you're living for him, but you're actually living for you. Because you're putting your emotions first. You're putting your desires, your feelings. You're accepting all of these things that are associated with you before him. Verse 2, he says, you lost. Because that's what the enemy promotes. Amen? You lost and you don't have. You murder and covet with your mouth and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask correctly. Why? Because you're asking for something you don't even see, or if you see it, you're seeing it according to the flesh. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your flesh, your pleasures, your lust. Then he says adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Why? Because that's how the world thinks. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but, but gives grace to the humble, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. People ask amiss. Amen. They see amiss. See, this is where we must constantly dethrone self. We must dethrone the old man and its deeds, its desires, its deceptions, and see correctly. Remember, the word says Jesus came to bring sight. <coughs> sight. He came to bring spiritual sight. Second Peter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Are you getting this? Second yes. Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Hallelujah, what's it say? Grace and peace be multiplied in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. That means you've got to access these resources. How many of y'all know the Bible is a resource? Amen. Amen. That's why people, I don't get it. People call themselves Christians and they still don't read the Bible. You can't be a Christian if you don't read the Bible. You can't be. Why? Because it gives all the character and all the information. It is a resource. How can you change? People trying to change by themselves. I'm a good person. No, God separated good and evil and righteous. See, good and, good and evil does not access heaven. Only those who eat of the tree of life, which produces righteousness, access heaven. Everyone else is going to be freaked out. Verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. In other words, he's wanting relationship. And is what? Divine power has given to us what? All things. That's his presence. That pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be what? Partakers. No, he's saying, look, you got to access eternal resources to partake. Through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature. So without accessing eternal resources, the divine nature cannot be established in you. Having escaped the corruption 
that is in the world through what? Lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours, in other words, if you are accessing eternal resources, these things will be yours. And if these things are yours and abound, you will neither bear, be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even blindness and has forgotten that he or she was a cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. And for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. So knowledge is an eternal resource through his divine power. It aids us with everything that we need to overcome all worldly influence and maintaining connection to the eternal presence as partakers of the divine nature. No, I won't repeat that. <laughs> Get the tape. Access comes by assistance with the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? Access comes by assistance with the Holy Spirit. Without assistance of the Holy Spirit, there's no access. In fact, he's always elbowing you. You know, hey, come on. Here's access. Go get it. Don't go that way. Amen? Go this way. Here's access. He's always trying to guide us to access. Colossians 3. <laughs> That's the problem right there. As soon as we start thinking, the Holy Spirit sees what we're thinking. He's trying to get access. Come on, don't go there. <laughs> Don't do that. Then we just, we kick the Holy Spirit out of that place. I got it. <laughs> oh, you got it all right. Colossians 3, verse 1. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? If then you were raised with Christ, are you ready for this? Seek those things which are what? Which are what? Now, what's he talking about? Seeking what? Eternal resources. Amen? Does everybody get this? Seek eternal resources. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts, your sight on things above and not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. <laughs> when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your what? Your members. Which are on earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, and don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the what? In the knowledge. And where was that knowledge? It's an eternal resource. Amen? So your renewing is always depending on how much you're connected to eternal resources. And the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Seek eternal resources above. In Matthew 6, what does it say? You don't have to go there. You can write it down. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to us. It's the same thing. What's he saying? Seek eternal resources, but make sure you're walking in righteousness so you have access. Amen. 
Does everybody get that? I will repeat that one if you need it. <laughs> so we're going to seek the kingdom of God and his eternal resources. And we have access because we're manifesting the fruits of righteousness. And I'm going to close at a specific location called Habakkuk. <laughs> oh, happy days. It's right before it. Habakkuk 2. Hallelujah. Is everybody there yet? <laughs> Come on, we're going to close here. <laughs> Habakkuk. Is everybody there? Good. Ver uh, chapter 2. Chapter 2, Habakkuk 2. Verse 1. Let's speak it because this is important. I will stand my watch. So what does a watchman do? Very good. <laughs> He watches. Then what does he watch with? His watch? His sight. Amen. He doesn't go watch. He sees. Amen. I will stand with my watch and I will set myself on the rampart. And watch to what? To see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I am corrected. Amen. See, even in this, we should be looking for conviction and correction. Amen. Amen. One of the things we always want to do is confirm, Lord, is this you? Is, am I responding? Am I reacting? What, is this you? Is this of the flesh? Is this of the spirit? You know, when I had uh, busted up my leg, they told me I would not be able to walk on it for three months. And uh, I said, no way. That's not what my dad says. And that happened on a Sunday because we were playing football. And Tuesday night was a service. And so I had crutches. And I couldn't put my foot down at all. I would have gone through the ceiling. And uh, so we praise and worship and praise and worship. And, uh, and the next thing, I, 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 and I didn't have my crutches near me. I put them away. And uh, I had a vision, and I saw the Lord. And he was, he was actually on the boat at the edge of the boat looking at me. And I guess I was in the water. <laughs> I didn't know where I was, but he was on the edge of the boat, and he's looking at me. And I thought, oh, cool. I put my foot down and almost went through the ceiling. <laughs> and he looked at me like, why don't you ask me? He said, I said, okay. And I said, Lord, uh, I forget what I said to him. <laughs> I said, Lord, command me to walk. And he looked at me and said, walk. I put my foot down, and I ran. I had no pain. My, my leg was totally healed. I didn't need the crutches again. Because I saw him. I saw it, and what I see, I received. Does everybody get it? I received, I saw it. When you, what you see, you get but again, what does it say? It says, I will wait to see what he says. And I, and I was waiting. I was like, I thought because I saw him, I was over with. I'm thinking, all right, put my foot down. I went, ah! And I couldn't put my foot down. So I was like, he looked at me. And I knew he was trying to tell me something. Sometimes God doesn't have to say anything. He just needs to look at you. Amen. And you know exactly what he's saying. And I, and, then, and, and I got the impression he's saying, asked me to command you to walk. And that's what I did. 
Lord, command me to walk. And when he said, walk, I was healed. Does everybody understand that? Okay, verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. But remember, write the vision. Why? Because visions speak, don't they? So you got to, when God shows you something, it's always speaking to you. It says, mine or not mine. Mine, you know, there's a kid that, mine, 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 mine. Things are yours and there are things that are not yours Amen. in the storehouses. So you'll know which ones are yours. Whatever one is yours, he's saying that one's because it's speaking to you. That's mine. I, I see it. I receive it. It's mine. Why? Faith is your connection to the unseen substance that is only seen in the spirit. And aren't we calling those things that are not as though they are? That's what's so important about being filled with the Spirit of God. Write the vision, make it plain on the tablets, that it may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end of it, it will what? It will what? It will speak. And it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Don't lose sight. Because... It will surely come, it will not tarry. But then he warns us, look at the next verse. Behold the proud. <laughs> his soul is not upright in him, but the just live by his faith. Remember, faith is your connection to the unseen substance that is only seen in the spirit because you're connected to him. Eternal resources. Access, accepted or denied. That's up to us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed of your word today. And we all want access, Daddy. We all want access. So we're asking for your mercies and grace. We repent for all areas where we've been bribed. Anything that's brought blinders on us, any area that we have fallen out of divine order, anything that we've put before you, and any area that we're still living for our life. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, for your mercies, and for your grace. And ask, Lord, that you restore us, reposition us, so that we may see, so that we may hear, and so that we may decree for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.